Hi, I'm Laura Hill and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to talk about something that I think affects most women. That pressure to look our best, to have our hair perfectly done, to have on a nice outfit, to always be cute. Where did it start and why is it still affecting us even when we're in our 50s, our 60s, even our 70s? Well, this is Smart Women, Smart Conversation, a place where we stop a couple times a week, grab a cup of coffee and talk about the issues that affect women day in and day out as we get a little bit older and a lot wiser. Well, I don't know if you're like me, but I was thinking back to when I was conscious of what I looked like. And I can remember middle school. We lived in Charleston, West Virginia. We were very middle class, but I remember that I had to have or wanted to have a new outfit for the first day of school. And I learned how to sew. My mom taught me how to sew and I remember making my own outfits and how excited I was to go pick out the fabrics. And sometimes my parents were able to, um, you know, buy us a new pair of jeans, buy a new shirt. Um, fashion certainly wasn't anything like it is today, but I was thrilled with that new outfit. And I remember that great feeling I had when I walked into school and all my friends were ooing and aahing over my new outfit and everything about you felt better, right? You felt like your hair looked better and your posture was better. And I guess it's just a real girl thing and it, it just follows us as we get older, no matter what path we're on. Because I remember when I went into corporate America, and I've, I've talked before about being in the hospitality industry for 14 years working for a hotel, a corporate hotel company that owned hotels throughout the United States. And I worked at a variety, New York, California, Colorado. Um, and I worked with a lot of men. And I remember that pressure to dress almost like the men, which is, sounds really strange to say, but I remember we wore the plaid suits and we wore, um, I wore nice loafers and we wore the silk ties that kind of mimicked a man's tie. That was the look. Now this would have been the mid eighties, but I was very conscious of not breaking out of that male mold. This was what a hotel executive needed to dress like. I was running a couple of restaurants at the time. Eventually I was a food and beverage director and I was trained kind of subliminally as to how I needed to look. Keep it classy, keep it simple, always look nice, always take the time to have my hair blow dried. You know, remember stockings, thank heavens we don't deal with that anymore too much, but stockings, making sure you had a pair of hose that didn't have a run in them, that was the right color for the right, um, you know, whatever, whether it was fall or winter, whatever the season you were ready. And we've taken that into our lives to the point where for me, at least it seems a little comical. I've shared that I was a city councilwoman in my city for a long time and a mayor for six years. And so I'm a little more conscious of, of looking nice when I leave the house. And I'll be honest, I've gotten into the hot habit of going to the grocery store after dinner eight o'clock, 8.30, 9 o'clock, right before the grocery store closes. Because honestly, I don't want the pressure of having to go in my bedroom and change and put on a nicer t-shirt and a nicer pair of, um, you know, workout pants. You know, I wear the baggy ones now, the, the tight ones. Well, that ship sailed a long time ago. But it's just this whole thought process. Can I go to the grocery store tonight? Oh gosh, I'm going to have to go in the bathroom, brush my hair. I'm going to have to put on a new t-shirt. It just becomes this whole thing about looking nice. So I went to my local grocery store a couple nights ago and I actually had to laugh at myself. Ran into a woman who was probably in the store doing the same thing I was doing. And we came around the aisle. We recognized each other. The first thing she said to me was, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm running into you. I didn't want to see anyone tonight because I look terrible. And she had a baseball cap on and she was dressed pretty similar to me. We both had our slides on. 
And I just chuckled. And I looked at her and I said, I felt the same way leaving the house. And honestly, that's the reason I go to the grocery store so late at night, because I don't want the pressure of having to look good. OK, what a ridiculous thing to even be saying. Why should I care? We were happy to see each other. We ended up chatting for about 15 minutes, and we're having coffee in, I think, two or three weeks. It didn't matter what we looked like. The only person who cared what I looked like was me. The only person who cared what she looked like was her. All, all I saw when she called out my name was her smile, and I was thrilled that someone was happy to see me. <laughs> and I was obviously happy to see her, and I know she felt the same way. At some point, we just have to break the mold. I'm not talking about leaving the house with, you know, um, coffee stain on your shirt, unless you're unlucky enough to spill your coffee in the car on the way to work. I'm not talking about going out of the house with your hair on fire, unless, guess what? You don't have any choice. You know, take it easy on yourself. Don't overdo it. Give yourself grace. This whole idea that we have to look a certain way keeps us from doing the things that we enjoy. And quite honestly, I'm not doing myself any favors by going to the grocery store so late at night. It would probably do me some good to go earlier and hopefully run into a lot of people that I haven't seen before. And who knows? You might run into someone who you find you missed a lot. Well, I hope you're having a great week. Please click like and subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to seeing you back on the channel soon. Take care.